this is actually more expensive than my first 3D printer. Hey guys, in order to even try Onyx nylon filament with carbon fiber, I have to upgrade quite a bit on my Ender 3V2. Now, there's a couple of reasons. This uh, prints best at around 280 degrees and obviously Ender 3 caps at 260 for safety reasons. One of the more serious uh, safety consideration is actually PTFE tubing, which heated up to over 250 and degrees start to release gases. One of these gases is fluorocarbon, also called C8, which you might be familiar for, well, being quite infamous uh, main ingredient of causing cancer near the Teflon factory in US. I've actually watched a film about it not so long ago. And while upgrading your hot end to all metal one prevents and the PTFE tubing from melting, you have to remember that some of the thermistors that are actually linked directly to a heating block are also covered with the same substance. So if you want to do it properly, you'll have to upgrade a couple of parts, not just the hot end. So it was the shopping time. I've sourced a couple of items on Amazon, including all metal hot end, extra thermistors and heating cartridge. Now pay extra care because some of the cartridges, they actually uh, come with uh, 12 volts and 24 volts. And Ender 3 version 2, it's obviously 24 volts in terms of uh, power supply to the hot end. So make sure you are picking the correct one. Now I also read online there was a bit of a problem with uh, some of them being mislabeled. So if you want to check this, if you have a multimeter, you can check the resistance of the heating cartridge. And if it's bigger than 12 uh, ohms, then you're good to go. If your cartridge reads about four ohms, this means you've got 12 volt version. Pay extra attention to the thermistor temperature rating as you don't really want to swap one coated with PTFE onto another. The one I've selected is rated for 300 degrees and comes with a handy M.3 thread, which I can just screw in into the heating block. Once I've got all the parts, I could start modifying my printer. I promptly removed the hot end from my 3D printer, then disassembled the cartridge and the thermistor. If you have any problems with the thermistor, don't heat it up. Put it in a fridge or freezer for a couple of minutes and let the metal cool down. Metal will shrink and you'll have a less problems removing it from the heating block. It also turned out that the cable supplied with the heating elements and the thermistor were slightly too short. Now that's not a problem because I already have the cables from the original uh, setup. So what I'm going to do is simply splice it to desired length. Now there is no orientation of polarity with these cables for both for thermistor and uh, heating elements so you don't have to worry about it, just solder extensions and you'll be fine. I've used a heat shrink tube to secure the cables. Assembling the hot end was fairly simple, all I had to do is just secure the nozzle and the heat breaker in place first and then screw the heat sink to the gantry. And then I've used the grub screw provided to align and secure the hot end in place. I was just about to put the shroud on, but then I've noticed that actually hot end is slightly short and barely sticks out outside my shroud. In order to fix this, I've disassembled the shroud and sanded down the piece for about two to three millimeters so it wouldn't stick out outside of the level of the nozzle. My last concern, was the thermistor. After screwing it into the heating block, I've discovered it's actually quite close to the shroud itself of internal fan. While this is much closer uh, to the shroud than I would like, the thermistor did radiate the heat onto the plastic and deformed it a little bit, but I don't think it actually poses any danger of catching fire at this point. I'll continue monitoring it, but first couple of prints reassured me that there was no foul smell and just a little bit of plastic being bent uh, because of the radiation of the heat and the pressure uh, given by the cables and a bit of a thermistor sticking out. Now that my Ender 3 has a new hot end and I can print higher temperature, we have to work on the firmware.
I already have an article on my website explaining how to build the firmware for your Ender 3 version 2, so I would strongly recommend you to check it out first before you're going to follow the steps in this video. There is also a link to the article in the description of this video for you. First step was to override the temperature. In configuration.h you have to scroll down until you find the correct value and change the values to being 15 degrees higher. Whatever you set in this field, the printer will prevent you from going to this temperature. The maximum you'll be able to reach will be 15 degrees lower. So bear that in mind. For me, I've used 315 degrees since my printer parts are compatible with 300 degrees. Next up, pick the correct thermistor from the list. Read all the descriptions and try to find the one that matches closer to the one you've purchased. For me, there was an option 13 that worked the best, but I've also tried option 1 and 11. You'll know you have a problems if you are unable to either heat up to the desired temperature or the temperature is oscillating. If after your changes you still have the temperature oscillating quite a bit, there are two reasons for that. First, you have to complete PID tuning. To enter commands and confirm PID values, I'm using Octoprint, but feel free to use anything you like. There is a really nice graph that explains how PID controls the temperature and what individual PID values do to the curve. So take a look at this for a moment and get yourself familiar because that's going to be very useful. Using the values from AutoTune command as a default values, uh, take a look at your curve and try to modify it manually depending on your circumstances. It's going to be very useful. I'm going to display the commands how to run the auto-tune first and then how to push the values to save it temporarily so you could try it out. Once you're happy with the values provided, then use them in configuration.h as the default values. If you're unable to control the oscillations, chances are you have to change the parameter number two, which is thermistor. I had big oscillations problems with the first choice of my thermistor and until I tried another one, I could not fix this by uh, tuning the PID parameters. Once you've confirmed that everything works just great, feel free to fill in those details into your configuration.h file, save it and then build a new firmware. That firmware then can be put on the SD card moved into a printer and flash your printer by powering it on. Reset your printers to uh, default settings in options and then restart your printer again. After that, check if everything is great, try to crank it up to like 280 degrees and monitor the temperature for a couple of moments. Now that my 3D printer is ready to go with more exotic filaments, I'm going to give it a go uh, to Nylon Onyx. Now, I'm trying to answer the question, what does it matter more, a better filament or better 3D printer? So I already know how good the prints are on really expensive printers with a really expensive filament. So thanks to leftovers from work, I'll find out whether the um, quality holds if printed on Ender 3 V2. If you want to find out the answer too, you know how YouTube works and how to subscribe, or just follow me on social media of your choice and you'll get instant notification whenever there is a new article or video for you to watch. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll go and queue up a nice print and see where it gets me. Take care!